From the KLIF 24-7 Newsroom. News and information, 570 AM, 96.3 FM, HD2. KLIF. Good morning. It is 7.30. Dozens of countries around the world are struggling to recover from a massive cybersecurity breach. Sean Tuma is a cybersecurity and data privacy partner at Sheaf and Stone in Frisco. He joins us live now. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. So I think uh, the main thing most people want to know right now is, is this, uh, is this uh, cyber attack affecting just businesses, or do we have to worry about our home computers too? No, this, this cyber attack is affecting all computers that run on a Windows-based system. So that means business computers, government computers, and our own personal computers as well. This has struck uh, countries worldwide. How about here in the U.S.? Have there been instances of um, people finding this virus on their computers here? Yes, Amy. We have, uh, there are interactive maps that show where this attack is taking place almost in real time. And there have been quite a few uh, infections here in the U.S. as well. So we're dealing with it also. All right. What kind of tips can you give people? The most important thing, this this came about because computer software for uh, Windows operating systems had not been updated with the security patches. So whenever you get these security patches, these security updates for your computers, you have to install those things as soon as possible because they're patching vulnerabilities that are used to do attacks like this. The other thing is people need to watch clicking on links and opening attachments in emails. Sure. That's one of the ways this spreads. Yeah, awesome. let, let me, excuse me, just a second. I want to go back to something you just said about about uh, pa- uploading the uh, security uh, uploads. This happens automatically for those of us with Windows 10. Do we need to worry about it? Windows 10 does not appear to be affected. It seems to be older operating systems that are Windows-based that either no longer have the the security patches, such as XP or Vista, which Microsoft has now created over the weekend for them, um, or like Windows 8 or things like that, like you said, that don't automatically update. They need to be uh, careful and, and on the lookout. You say don't open emails and different attachments from people that you don't know, but you also have to avoid clicking on bad links on social media too, right? That's exactly right, Amy. Any kind of, you know, we use what we call phishing attacks, which is where they use deception to try and get people to click on links that bring about uh, dangerous malware into their system. That can be social media, can be text messaging, can be email, can be uh, websites, you know, uh, that aren't real uh, um, vetted and uh, up and on the up and up. You know, some of the places people shouldn't be going on the Internet, a lot of those websites are infected and they just don't know it. If you turn on your computer computer and you find that you do have this ransomware on there, is there any way to remove it, or do you have to pay the ransom? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, if The ransom's between three and $600, and we don't know for sure if they're going to honor that commitment or not to, to unlock it. But if you don't want to pay the ransom, there are professionals out there that as long as you leave your computer turned on and do not shut it down, may be able to get uh, to get it restored, but their fees are going to be a whole lot more than three to six hundred dollars. Or if you have backups of all of your data, if you have a good backup of all of your data, then you could simply restore it and and have your computer running again without paying the ransom. I would guess that would involve uh, that would involve cleaning your your hard drive and going back to scratch, right? That's exactly right. And there's a risk that that the backup has been infected as well, which is a technique we see these criminals doing now as they go in and infect the backup before they inf- or, or run the, uh, the uh, encryption on your whole network or your whole computer so that you've lost both. And I'm thinking if you pay the ransom, then these criminals have your credit card, too, and that could be a real problem. <laughs> Well, you, the part of the difficulty is you have to pay it in Bitcoin, and getting Bitcoin is very difficult. There are ATMs and things like that, but you know they they do know that you're willing to pay a ransom, for sure. So the likelihood of them coming back to you down the road is pretty high. Yeah, yeah, and you don't want to continue. 
to encourage more of this kind of thing. And I expect uh, we're just seeing the beginning of an unfortunate new era. Uh, Sean, thanks very much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. We'd like to get back to you later. That sounds great. Thank you, Dave. Sean Tuma, cybersecurity and data privacy partner at Chief and Stone in Frisco.